right. Well, yeah. So it's funny. Um, I was using it to kind of tee everything up. So obviously, Alexander, I've been connected to you for probably a little over a year now, and I've watched kind of get vocal, grow, and whatnot. And even though I haven't gone all the way in on using the platform with with everything they can do, I've been pushing people there. I've been a big fan, a big supporter um, of the platform. Uh, Kevin from Habitual Roots is popping in. I've been letting him know that I think him and he and his organization should definitely take advantage uh, and use it. But for people watching, for people that we're going to record and put this out to, why don't you give a little information, Alex, uh, on your your background story and, and get get vocal as well? All right. Yeah. So I've been an entrepreneur for a while, pretty much all of my adult career, <laughs> and I've done a couple of different startups in the fintech space first, um, payments and lending. And then um, just a little bit more than two years ago, started Get Vocal. And it all started with a very lofty vision that social media really does a great job at connecting us today, but doesn't do the best job at connecting us in a truly meaningful and substantial way. So Get Vocal, the whole idea, the whole genesis of the idea was to say, how can we have more in-depth connection around content that matters to people? And that's really how Get Vocal was born. And so we, we were building a lot, we were experimenting a lot and arrived at focusing on podcasters as content creators, not exclusively podcasters, but um, majority so, and offering them a live video experience to interact directly with their audiences and with their fans. And then in addition to that, allow their fans and their audience to connect with each other and create community. And so I feel like, you know, it's really things are going in that direction and with Corona and all that craziness happening and people being confined to their homes, as I was just saying, uh, it's becoming more and more obvious that this is something that's truly needed, right? So we have tons of passively consumable content out there and, you know, we, we just an overload, but I feel like there's um, an, an undersupply when it comes to content that people can really interact with and engage with and that allows them to also connect to others that have maybe similar interests that are kindred spirits and all of that. Cool, very cool. So I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but with everything kind of currently happening, um, two things. What have you noticed kind of changed differently in your platform? And then what are ways that in general people can take advantage and use this platform with our current circumstances? So we're definitely seeing a big uptick in usage overall. And it's very, it's very interesting to see how many different people are trying to figure out ways of doing what they usually do in a physical setting in a virtual room. So, you know, yesterday we had some folks on the platform that are teachers that are trying to understand if this is a way to interact with their students. Um, you know, we, we, we have people that are doing yoga classes. We have people that are doing breakdancing classes online and in this virtual space. So you name it, you can think of it. People are thinking about how to bring what they are doing right now to an online, to a virtual space. And there's a, a bunch of tools out there that one can use. I think one of the biggest virtual tools that is being used for business meetings is Zoom. Mm -hmm. But Get Vocal is really more creator focused. Zoom is just everyone comes into the meeting. You can have meetings with up to 50 people and they become difficult to manage. There's always those two people that are not muting their, their audio and that right. uh, feedback coming in. Get Vocal is really a virtual stage with up to four seats on that stage and then you have the audience that can interact via chat and that can cycle in and off of the stage and um yeah that's really what what we're what we're all about and why this also is such a useful tool for especially podcasters yeah definitely so the podcast space has interested me for a while and i think this just it just gives more engagement you know in general i think audio is the focus 
definitely where the world's going, but it's nice to be able to see visually connect, be able to take people's questions in this format. Podcasting, you might, you might always almost think that it's counterintuitive that Get Vocal would even be used by podcasters at all. But the reason why it makes sense for podcasters is because podcasters, unlike a lot of other digital content categories, are much more loved, have much more of an emotional connection uh, with their audience. Um, just because it's more authentic, oftentimes podcasters do it not for the paycheck, but because they just love what they're podcasting about and all of that. So there's a huge untapped opportunity in creating or allowing podcasters to have a more interactive relationship with their audience. And then, of course, also allowing their audience to connect amongst each other, right? The two of us might be diehard fans of a super niche podcast that covers, I don't know, um, you know, knitting or whatever, you know, or some like extremely niche sport or whatever it is, but we will never hear about each other. We will never know each other yet. We have a super high affinity towards each other. We might even become friends. So get vocals a space where you can create those connections around content that you really love. I like that. I think, I think the opportunity in general is always in the niche. And then this is a platform that, let people focus in on their niche and their passions and things like that. And it creates um, a platform or an experience for people to, to your point, to be able to communicate about that and be able to dive in and connect with one another in a much more quicker fashion than just looking at someone's comments on Facebook or Instagram and seeing that they kind of are into what you're into and, you know, going down all that funnel. So, yeah. Different, right? If you want to just inform yourself about something and learn about something, there's, pretty much a YouTube video, a how-to podcast, or whatever, you can get the information online on almost everything, regardless of how niche your interest may be. But there are a lot of areas, there are a lot of domains where the pure informational value is not enough, right? Where they're sort of connecting on an emotional level with the person who has a shared experience or something like that matters as well. So, for example, love, dating, relationships, sexuality. Yeah, you can. There, there's more than enough video or talk or also written content that you can read up on pretty much every topic. Yet still, if I hear you talk about it live, I can relate to what you're saying in a different way. And this content starts connecting with me more and becoming more 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 impactful for me and the same with a, a bunch of different topics myself i think um that's a good point you know the the interaction especially on some of those those topics that are more personal um i think are key to kind of take it to the next level and to give that real time feedback to people um, you know, you said earlier that, you know, break dancing, yoga, things like that, where um, we're coming through and people were creating and sharing. What other things do you just kind of see coming down the horizon? What type of people do you see using this platform or using just, you know, video in general um, to communicate and to deliver their messaging around their products or whatnot? really started focusing more on podcasters, as I said. And so far, we have a programming, we, we sort of support a programming, it's called the Connection Zone, that deals with dating and relationships and sexuality. And we are launching other programming blocks as well within the next couple of weeks. So we're looking to get true crime and mystery fandom onto the platform on Thursdays. We're looking to get reality TV fandom and by fandom i mean always listeners of certain podcasts that deal with different reality tv shows and whatnot on to the platform on tuesdays we're looking to um, have a midday midday content block of parenting and family oriented content on mondays and something more food and cooking and health and nutrition related on sundays and then sort of take it from there eventually branch out into sports and everything so i feel like those are some of the categories that we will be pushing 
and then everything else just happens organically, right? We didn't reach out to break dancers or to yoga teachers. They sort of just come onto the platform and figure out how they can how they can make best use of it. And it's really interesting to see how how folks get creative. Definitely, definitely. I'm interested. I'm hoping Kevin is able to come uh, back on a little bit. His group, he runs uh, Habitual Roots is in a, an emotional intelligence uh, business. And he works with a lot of different people on, you know, coaching them. There he is. Um, I'll let him speak for himself here shortly. Um, but, so, Kevin, now that you're back, I'd love for you to tell people a little bit about what you're doing, uh, what your business is, Habitual Roots, uh, what you're doing, how you've been adapting, and then also um, what you see with Get Vocal and how you're able to communicate with your audience and people in that realm. Um, mm, so Habitual Roots is a essentially a community around and centered around people connecting authentically with themselves so they can show up more fully in their day-to-day -day practices, you know, in their work, in their relationships, in all areas of the aspects of their life, right? And so what we've done is we've created a methodology that allows people to interact in a deeper and more authentic way, but as well as we provide community events. So everything we do in businesses and schools and as well as uh, essentially in the community, it's really focused uh, in person. So as you can imagine, with the shift and the growth and the sh uh, change in our community has really taken a uh, pattern disruption to how we engage and uh, interact with the people in our world. Um, we, as Habitual Roots, are recognizing that we are not going to be reactive, that we're going to take a very calm, patient approach and find even more stillness in this time of chaos. And so we are strategically looking at the different platforms that we are vetting out. Um, as of right now, I will say that we do love Get Vocal a lot. Um, there are definitely things, and as you saw the email that we may have sent, um, some questions of how the platform may interact uh, in that sense or in a more adaptive way as it evolves. And this could be a huge catalyst for Get Vocal and any other platform similar. Um, but definitely looking to uh, create more of a community here through Get Vocal, um, allowing people to share and speak up and interact and engage in a space such as this, right? Um, so yeah, um, we're shifting very, very patiently, very still and very just calm uh, versus everyone being very reactive, responsive and just in a chaotic state. So um, it's necessary, I think, that this world is going through what it's going through. So, so, so what are some of the things that habitual roots would do in person? In person? So what we've done, as you can imagine, is just the basic things from uh, yoga to meditations. Um, that's easily transferable, but we do a lot of trainings um, and also a lot of interaction and networking experiences too. So we do things like mindful mingles. Um, we do things like our roots methodology training that takes them through five phases of reset to organize to overcome so you can transform and smile day to day. So that's essentially our five-step process, the training that we do in businesses that we actually work with groups and individuals on. Cool. That sounds exciting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ultimately, it's for people to help integrate emotional intelligence, mindfulness, and just positive habits. So you can really just show up fully as yourself. Um, but it's a pretty fun experience. But ultimately, uh, we are still learning, especially with the Get Vocal platform, figuring out the Patreon stuff and figuring out the ways to have almost like a. Uh, organization structure or a single sign-on structure to um, versus having to yeah yeah and I, I won't bring up those questions because you already have seen them um, so but yeah whenever you get a chance I'd love to hear the feedback on some of those <laughs> So yeah, I could I could totally address these questions right now, or once we're done with the recording, Brian, whatever, whatever you prefer. Yeah, it's up to you guys. I mean, it might be a good some good chatter here, but totally up to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I'd be open to discussing it. Um, it might be useful for people. It depends on how you brand this, Brian. Um, you know, this could be a very useful. Uh, and I know it says like how get vocal will serve the community. So this might be some questions that other people might have as they want to look to vet out this platform too. Okay, cool. So let me let me go over some of the questions then that you um, asked, Kevin. 
I guess one of them is that you, um, you sort of have a channel situation, but you have multiple people that you want to let manage that challenge, that channel, right? So you have the habitual roots one, then you have multiple people that should be able to do stuff within that channel, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and so what you're able to do is um, every user essentially has their own login on kind of like a user level, but then you can assign um, co-administrators for channels. And so that solves, I think, some of the things that you're trying to do. So on a channel level, if someone subscri subscribes to your channel, then you can assign them a co-admin role, and then they essentially have full authority to manage that channel. They essentially have the same functionality that you as the channel owner have. They can edit the channel, they can edit descriptions, upload images, all of that. They can schedule out broadcasts and events. And then within the events, they have the full hosting controls as you as the owner would. And you can assign an unlimited amount of channel um, admin. So that might, okay. be, that might be a solution. So that was one of the questions that you asked. Um, and I believe, um, that is also the second question that you asked about co-hosting, right? So we don't have a dedicated co-hosting feature, but everyone who's a channel admin automatically becomes a co-host for any of the events that happen within that channel, if that makes sense. Yes, and I did see when you create the broadcast, like a scheduled broadcast, you can add the email as a co-host. So that, that in itself doesn't really do too much. That just sends them an email that this yes. is scheduled. Right. That just sends them an email, um, um, and then you need to make people a co-host on the channel admin level. So how do I do that? Because I've been like kind of exploring that. So if I like click the TV that manages broadcasts, yeah, is it in that area? Yeah. So like what you do is you go to your um, subscriber list, you pull up your subscriber list. And then there are three dots next to each subscriber wow. name. And you click on that, and it's it's a little hidden. Uh, we need to communicate this feature a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that's where you can make people channel admins. Okay, perfect. I just found it. So yeah, that helps a lot. That answers the those two questions there. So and you had awesome. another one where you ask, can you record private rooms? So I guess. I'll just explain what are the different types of rooms that you can have on Get Vocal. You can schedule a public broadcast. You can just immediately go live, which is essentially the same thing, just that you don't schedule it out, that you don't you know, have a description or artwork or anything like that, but it's in both cases publicly available. And then you have what you call private rooms that you can open by clicking the little plus icon in the header bar on on web browsers. The thing about private rooms is you cannot record within private rooms. Um, that is a feature that only works within public rooms. Um, that's something that we could add, but so far the private rooms have really been used just kind of like as a meeting room where people want to do meetings in, in private, sort of a feature we were testing out. We actually internally use the private rooms for all of our internal business meetings. Um, but yeah, so there's no recording feature with the private rooms. Sweet. Okay. And so then the broadcast now button is the, the public room. That's yeah. just not with an image or anything like scheduled. It's just like, hey, let's just pop it up. But that one can be recorded. Yes, yes. So you have the, the same functionality in terms of your hosting, your host features and all of that as you would in a recorded one, sorry, in a um, scheduled one. It's just, it's an easier way to just immediately open something up without going through the, the process of scheduling something, giving it a description, all of those things. Okay. One, one of the other questions that you asked, do comments posted on Facebook Live or YouTube Live feed into the comments of Get Vocal? And the, the answer to that is not. So the Get Vocal chat is exclusive to what's going on on Get Vocal. And that's something that we've thought about perhaps incorporating um, because it's, it's not that difficult to do. 
The thing is that we want to incentivize the communication that happens on Get Vocal, right? And so there are some services that allow you to pull in all of the comments and then you can sort of answer the, so let's say YouTube comment comes in, you can answer the comment and then it gets pushed back out to YouTube. But those are really production tools. Get Vocal is a community tool. So if you have comments that are coming into the community from outside, you sort of lack that context. Where is it coming from, right? So um, that's why we encourage creators to, Yes, stream out to other platforms like Facebook and YouTube. But if someone wants to interact, have them come over to get vocal. Sweet, sweet, thank you. Um, and so that's kind of like a strategic reason why we don't have that feature. And do YouTube live or Facebook live videos get saved? The answer is depends on what your settings are on YouTube or Facebook. So. Whenever you stream out from Get Vocal, that video will always get saved on Get Vocal and be available in your within your channel page. But then it depends what your settings are on Facebook or YouTube, whether they get saved or not. Facebook generally saves um, lives. YouTube, I think by default, does not, but you can set it in a way that it does. And that's only one of the settings that you want to look at when you're looking at your Facebook or YouTube accounts. Another one is your privacy settings, especially on Facebook. The default setting for um, live streams that are pushed through a third party platform, like at Vocal, would be private. So one of the things that we often see is that creators are like, why did no one see my Facebook Live? Well, you need to make sure that when um, you set it up, you give the permissions that the, the videos that are pushed through to, to your Facebook can be accessible to whoever you want them to have um, access to. Thank you. Yeah, and, and those are those were just the questions that you asked. Do you have any other general questions or specific ones? Yeah, I, I, not necessarily, but I think an, an added one that you just brought up was so whenever I make someone an admin on a specific on the channel for Habitual Roots as the, the overarching company, how do they go about um, going to edit? that channel, right? Do they always have to go to, like is it on their profile now as an admin or uh, will they have to always go back to the Habitual Roots profile? No, so the way that it works is when you, um, um, when you click on the Manage Channels icon and you are a co-admin of more than just your own channel, you will be able to select which channel you wanna to navigate to. Sweet, okay. So you'll, you'll always be asked which one you want to go to when you click on the TV icon. Perfect. Yeah. And so, so yeah, I, we feel that that's something powerful. We have something else that we just recently launched and that we think is a very important feature, and we call it our Vcoin feature, our monetization feature. So essentially... What happens is users can purchase Vcoin on our platform. It's kind of like a credit. And then they can spend it on creators either in their live events or also in their channel welcome room, which is constantly open. You may have seen that, provided that you enable it. That's a control that you can enable or disable. And then creators, when they receive these V coins, they can redeem those for cash that we as a platform pay out to them. And okay. so the whole idea is that we want to give creators, again, our focus is of course, I guess podcasters, but then again, Get Vocal really has been built for creators that are catering to community. So I feel like habitual roots totally falls within our, our focal group. We want to give creators the ability to monetize their communities directly without annoying advertisements. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everyone's kind of sick of ads and 
ads also in many cases don't even work that well. And if you're creating content that's meaningful to your audience, your audience actually in many cases has a willingness to pay. And so this is a way where everyone sort of benefits. Your audience gets to show their love to you in a way where you're able to recognize them and the rest of the community can recognize them as supporting you as the creator as well. And you as a creator obviously are able to earn um, an additional income and there are no ads. So nice. that's something that we've just recently launched and are, will be promoting more heavily. Okay. And a, I guess a question for you too, um, that kind of ties to it, like around payments and stuff. I saw that like Patreon is an amazing platform that links up to it. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is the limitation of Patreon one um, can only go to scheduled videos. Can we look at, and I'm just, I don't know if you, if it's possible, but doing it to recorded videos. So like our, we're thinking and considering about giving free access to live videos and then asking payments for if they want to go back and refer for recorded videos. That, that's a good question. That's definitely something that we should take away and sort of add to our feature list that we should be thinking about. The way that it works currently is if you restrict access to patrons for record for a live video, then the recorded version of that event will also be restricted to whoever you gave access to, right? So... Um, but, but what you're asking is free access to a live video and then restrict the access to the recorded video. Yeah. But what kind of a case use case are you thinking? Like, is that something that you've already seen somewhere else or is that sort of just an idea that you had? I mean, I've seen it on other education platforms and other like event platforms, uh, but we just want to do that because of, just the simplicity of reason of like, hey, if you join live, I mean, of course you can be there, but if you want to refer and like use it as a reference or resource, um, it could be something that could be monetized. That's a good idea. That's definitely something that we that we should think about adding to the platform, and that's yeah. also something that we encourage, you know, folks like yourself, creators on the platform to keep doing is telling us what would you like to see. What do you find unintuitive? What might be broken? I mean, we're a young platform, so of course there's still some things that need improvement and all. So yeah, I, I encourage yeah. you to like keep reaching out to us and like letting us know what you like, um, but maybe also things you don't like, what you'd like to see. Of course, and like, and again, I'm not the developer here, or you know, I have some technical background, but I imagine like it could just be somewhat of like a similar thing what you're doing per video but for just the recorded toggle tab of like you know toggling saying hey all recorded videos must go through patreon as well um and another thought too that i've been noticing is that is if there's a way for two things around scheduling and creating one is where you can make reoccurring uh things right so whenever you schedule a date you can say, hey, every two weeks or every Monday, um, something like that. So then we don't have to manually create the same thing over and over again. Or if we, you can't do that, then maybe a copy function of just copying that same event and just copy, save, copy, save. Uh, just some ideas there. Very good ideas. Actually, I just had someone ask me the same thing earlier today <laughs> to have uh, recurring events yeah and that that's something you know those are things that we could relatively easy like it's not so hard for us to implement things like that and that's our focus right now we've built a lot of features now we really want to make sure that we improve the overall intuitiveness of the experience and make little tweaks like the one that you just mentioned nice sweet Cool. Yeah, those those are some really good ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I wanted to ask Alex. Um, it's possible, although you know, Gizmo is primarily used for live streaming. People are able to post um, backdated content, right? They're able to load in videos and just have it pushed through. No. Okay. No. 
you the only that's something that we were thinking about doing but um right now the only your you, it has to be live first to be recorded on the platform gotcha gotcha okay all right yeah great great uh, meeting you kevin enjoyed the conversation there um any other things that brian you wanted to cover no that was the gist of it i feel like people got a lot of good information i wanted to ask that um that, that question uh there and that's about it appreciate the time cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, keep keep me posted on on what you're up to, and if you have any questions, you know, reach out to to us. You know, you know how to get a hold of me, and um, yeah, w keep washing your hands. <laughs> Don't go crazy <laughs> in quarantine, <laughs> and uh, you know, good good luck to everyone in these times. It's it's nuts. It's fascinating, but it's also just absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Appreciate the time once again. I'm sure we'll be we'll be circling back to you. I'm sure there'll be some new updates and things to share soon. Yeah, and Kevin just asked how would how would he know about the progress on any of the suggestions that he made. So usually when we make um, bigger bigger feature updates, we will send a newsletter out to everyone saying, "Hey, we just added monetization or whatever." If it's smaller things, then we um, then we encourage you to, I guess, come to one of our town halls. We do them sometimes on Friday or just, you know, ask us, tweet at us or, you know, email us or anything like that. And we'll let you know. I'm sure we'll get that if Matt will see the recording. <laughs> well, appreciate Alex. Thanks again. Um, yeah, stay healthy. Absolutely. Take care, Brian. Thank you. Take care. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye.